Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we'll chat with Beth Ann Strollo of Quincy Community Action Programs, get an update on some of their upcoming activities. First, though, we check out the news for you. Photos of a suspect wanted for shooting a man at the Holiday Inn Express in North Quincy early yesterday have now been released. Police say this man is wanted for shooting a 31-year-old man in the knee at the Holiday Inn Express on Arlington Street just after 3 a.m. The victim was reportedly shot in the doorway of a room at the hotel, but was not a registered guest. He was being treated for non-life-threatening injuries at Boston Medical Center. Police say he is not cooperating with the investigation. Anybody with any information is asked to contact Quincy Police. Three Quincy restaurants are closed because workers there tested positive for coronavirus recently. The Half Brow and Man at Lunch, both on C Street and Malachi Saloon in Quincy Center, are all shut down after several workers tested positive for the virus, prompting health officials to try and contact anyone who may have been exposed while the workers were on the job. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says the virus flare-ups are a reminder not to let your guard down. And we knew as we progressed in the phasing that we would see some more cases, but we're still within a decent range. It's a little concerning. Uh, so, you know, it's a reminder to all of us we need to really pay attention. Uh, we had an issue at one of our graduations. We had the North Quincy High graduation Friday night. We had two Quincy High graduations to split the numbers up, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And at one of those graduations, we did have a problem with, the, uh, with one of the folks that were there who wasn't feeling well and evidently wasn't feeling well before they went to the graduation uh, and did test uh, positive for the COVID. Uh, that is a reminder to everybody, if you're not feeling well, stay home. Don't put other people in jeopardy, uh, please. Earlier this month, three teachers and summer school programs tested positive for the virus and a parent at a Quincy High School graduation ceremony also tested positive after falling ill during the ceremony. A leaking propane tank is being blamed for a four-alarm fire that destroyed a single-family house in Quincy on Monday evening. The blaze erupted at 25 Hannah Street in Quincy Point while a family member was using a gas grill. Fire officials believe the propane tank exploded, spreading that fire to the house. Everyone escaped safely. However, three firefighters were treated for heat exhaustion, and two adjacent homes sustained some damage. 75 firefighters responded to the scene because of the high heat conditions. The Red Cross was assisting the family. Quincy police say a Dorchester man jumped out of a moving car, letting it crash right into a house during a drug bust on Sunday night. 26-year-old Akeem Mattis is charged with bailing out of the car on Dunn's Court in West Quincy, where it struck a post for a deck and the front door, but nobody was hurt. Mattis was arrested after a foot chase. Police say he sold crack cocaine in the parking lot of the apartments at 150 Quarry Street, where a woman admitted to buying the drugs. Police also say they found a bag of crack cocaine in the area where Mattis fled on foot. He faces multiple drug and motor vehicle charges in Quincy District Court. Well, today is the last day of the virtual Campaign for Hope to benefit Father Bills and Main Spring homeless shelters of Quincy and Brockton. The shelter's signature food fest and auction had to be canceled this year due to the pandemic. So the online campaign for Hope was launched with the goal of raising $500,000. Recently, frontline staff at Father Bill's and Main Spring were recognized for their service during the COVID-19 crisis. Five staffers received the Richard C. and Virginia A. Welch Dedicated Volunteer Award for their work assisting individuals, families, and veterans experiencing or at risk of homelessness. The workers were praised for putting their own health at risk to help those in need. That award is named in memory of longtime board members Richard and Virginia Welch. Father Bills says although the campaign for hope ends today, they will be fighting the virus for the foreseeable future. Coming up, we check in with Beth Ann Sprolo of Quincy Community Action Programs about their Head Start and Housing Assistance Programs. That's next.
We're uh, checking back in with uh, Beth Ann Strollo, the CEO of Quincy Community Action Programs, to get a little update on how they're coping during uh, this pandemic, and also to tell you about uh, some uh, new programs and changes that are coming. Hey, Beth Ann, nice to see you again. Hello, Joe. Nice to see you, too. It's been a couple of months now since uh, we last chatted at that time. It really was a a crisis situation in terms of helping folks with uh, with their rent, with food assistance. What's what's the current situation now with the pandemic here in in your uh, your service area? Well, I think, um, you know, while we got through that uh, very difficult time of March, April, and really into May, we um, saw tremendous increases in our food center. Um, we did the Quincy COVID rent program in our housing program that I think we may have spoken about last time. Um, uh, but since then, we really have a steady demand for our services, and we're continuing to um, figure out, continue to figure out how we can deliver the rest of our services in a new way, which is like everybody. Uh, re-engineering uh, our work like many other uh, nonprofits and companies are doing. Uh, and uh, we have, I, I have to say, I'm very lucky to work with an amazing group of staff who are incredibly resilient and just keep um, changing when we need to change so that we can meet the demand. So uh, our food center is still up and running. We're still seeing clients directly there. We have the same protocols we had in place when we spoke last in April, the beginning of April. Um, Clients come into our foyer. They don't come all the way into the building and we provide their bags of food. And um, so we are up and running and it's summer. So there are a lot of nice fresh vegetables and produce this time of year. So we encourage people to continue coming. Um, We're sort of anticipating, depending upon what Congress does with the unemployment benefits, uh, which is a major concern, of course, many, many of the clients that we saw at the beginning who didn't have that benefit yet then received it, which really helped them. Uh, If those benefits go away or they are reduced, uh, we do expect to see uh, more increases again as we move into the fall. So we're open at the food center and again, encourage people to come. Um, The other area that we have changed and um, it is an exciting uh, announcement for us and and one always filled with anticipation every day is our Head Start Center has reopened. We reopened a couple weeks ago and we are serving about 50% of the number of children that we normally would serve in the summer. These are based upon the new rules that the Department of Early Education Care has established that you reduce the classroom capacity by about 50%. So um, we have all, it's a whole new program. Uh, our, Our staff again there have been incredibly creative and Uh, willing to jump in. Um, They were very excited to see the children return and come back, but uh, there are many rules. And uh, not only have the staff been great, but the children have been great. We serve uh, toddlers and preschoolers in our center. So their ages um, range from 15 months to uh, five years old. And it's amazing, the preschoolers, the ones who are a little bit older, three and four years old, are wearing their masks all the time when they're told to. Um, They don't have to have it on the entire time if they're social distanced and the rooms are, they're quite spread out in our classrooms now. It's very, very different. We, our teachers are doing uh, sanitization throughout the day. Our uh, facility staff are doing the same thing. And we do not allow the parents to come into the building, which is a hard thing and, a, and especially a hard thing in Head Start because that program is very unique in that it helps the parents um, really as much as the children. So we're doing a lot of virtual connections with our families and our parents and for the children who are not back in our center yet. Okay. And that's going well. Uh, our staff are staying connected to our families. Um, and at least with the nice weather, um, they can also walk outside with families and talk to them um, in that setting, which is helpful um, so that they can see them. Yeah. With masks, with masks, of course. Of course. Uh, we're very, yeah. we're very 
uh, diligent about um, uh, staff needing to have masks on um, in our facilities. So, yeah. Uh, so it's a it's it's up and running. We expect that in the fall, assuming that the numbers do not change and that the governor does not change the directive on this, that we will have more children returning to the center in the fall for our um, part year program, okay. which uh, which we run too. Yeah. So. How did you determine, Bethann, um, which students could come into the program and which would stay virtual? Well, it, it sort of um, determined itself, actually. We okay. contacted all of the families who would have been eligible to be there in the summer. Those are for our working families. We mm -hmm. also serve DCF children at our center. Um, they had first priority, the DCF children, and we were able to accommodate everybody who wanted to return. Okay. Not every parent was ready to have their child come back. Um, so, uh, and we also had a number of children age out into become kindergarten age. So we had some movement there that's normal. And we're, okay. um, we are accepting new enrollments. So if people are interested, they should call um, and to schedule a virtual intake with our staff. And um, those numbers are on our website for our Head Start program. Yep. Um, and this is the uh, center over on uh, Prey Street in Quincy Point, right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Right. And so how, how many would you say are actually in the building now? Right now there's about 40 children. Okay. And, and usually we have about double that in the summer. Um, there are, that center holds around 200 children total, but wow. we will not be allowed to serve that many children in the fall even, yeah. according to the Department of Early End Care. Uh, guidelines right yeah. now. It's very exciting because it, I mean I'm sure you're aware a lot of the uh, public school systems are struggling right now with you know how are they going to get kids back in the classrooms in the fall so you uh, you're really uh, setting the the standard if you will or taking the lead uh, and doing it over the summertime. Yes well I think that you know the state realized it was maybe one parents are this is to encourage parents to be able to go back to work that's who yeah. we're serving in the summer sure. and the state wanted to make sure that that happened um, and uh, it might be a little more manageable because um, of the reduced numbers it's a very different thing than the public schools yeah, K through 12 are right. dealing with um, their protocols will be a little bit different and um, it, in some ways, it's easier to have a three-year-old and a four-year-old keep the mask on than a 12-year-old keep the mask on. So <laughs> in many I, ways, yeah. I, I don't envy the K through 12 uh, schools right now. It's a really difficult decision and um, that they're dealing with and yeah. a challenge, as, as you know. And this is a challenge for us, too. Yeah. It will be an ongoing. Um, there are many protocols in place. We're doing a health screening of every child and their family every day when they're dropped off. And um, if so any temperature children, checks part of that? Temperature checks are not required. Oh, Initially, okay. uh, the Department of Early End Care had that on the list. And mm -hmm. they, uh, within about a week, the public health experts uh, said that it was really not reliable enough. Okay. If we have uh, a nurse on staff mm -hmm. and if we suspect that it, we're always doing temperature checking that is a more reliable check, a, a, not the uh, handheld screening tool. Um, so we, we do that during the day if a child, if we suspect a child has a fever. Okay. And that happens. They get fevers. They're yeah. little <laughs> and, and they do and they have and they will continue to. So we have a whole protocol in place for when that happens. Um, sure. And, and I do have to just give a little bit of a shout out to uh, Manit Health Center yep. and Ruth Jones, the Quincy's Commissioner of Public Health, who have been incredibly helpful to us through this reopening process. Um, we have, they are part of our uh, protocol if something does come up and uh, Cynthia Sierra and her team at uh, Manit have done a training session with our Head Start staff. Uh, to educate them a little bit more about the public health implications and uh, the reason for all of the protocols. It was very, very helpful. Um, they uh, were really fortunate in the city to have them 
as a partner for us, but really for the whole city to have them. Uh, as you know, they have a testing tent and they've been um, incredibly helpful to so many individuals and organizations uh, throughout this since the very beginning. I uh, can't say enough about, about how great they've been. Uh, and given that we don't have a hospital anymore in Quincy, uh, they're filling that void for us uh, right now on the, in a, you know, in a community level. So uh, yeah, absolutely. really great work that they do. Uh, does uh, QCAP have a, a transportation program also for the Head Start program? We, we did have a, um, a small crew of one. Uh, we're always looking for bus drivers, believe it or not. It yeah. was a, an area that we uh, struggled to keep those positions filled. Um, we are not providing transportation okay. right now. Uh, we felt that um, we weren't quite ready to do that. We will be assessing that as time goes on. It's very challenging and yes. uh, to do that, uh, particularly with small children. Um, uh, of course, there we have an aid on the bus. There are many procedures we have in place that keep it safe. But uh, for right now, we are uh, stepping back from that and we'll keep assessing that. Okay, very good. Yeah, I think it's important to point that out because, as again, the public schools are struggling with that portion of uh, the fall reopening too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we should, can we get, just get back to the food pantry. For, I don't think we mentioned where it was, Beth Ann. Just for folks yeah. who might not be aware. Yeah, right. It's in uh, Southwest Quincy at One Copeland Street, the corner of Copeland and Granite, and. Uh, and we are open five days a week. The uh, t Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we are open from nine to 4.30. And on Wednesdays, we open at 11 and stay open until 6.30, 6 or 6.30 to, uh, to uh, help folks who are working and who can't get there during the regular uh, work day. Okay. Uh, those hours are on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, we have special COVID page on our website where we are listing um, the new procedures and protocols that we have. Uh, and again, um, we ask that people wear a mask when they come to pick up their groceries. Um, if um, in the event they don't have one, we will provide them with one, uh, but we're very, uh, the contact is minimal. We put the bags out and um, again, don't, uh, clients cannot come into our center anymore. So that's a hard thing for our staff. Uh, but, uh, and we're also continuing to do, even with that, we are continuing to do SNAP enrollment. Okay. Um, so that is another service that um, we do over the phone. We gather, people can drop information off to us and we continue to gather information over the phone with clients to get them enrolled in SNAP. And right now uh, there are HIP incentives available, the healthy incentive program that the state has, which allows uh, anyone who's a SNAP recipient to use a special benefit at the farmer's markets and farm stands mm -hmm. um, all over oh, any, okay. any market that accepts them. Okay, great. So, and in terms of um, donations, do you need uh, food donations or monetary donations for, for the food pantry? You know, we always encourage folks to give us monetary donations. We take food donations, but um, we can actually buy food at a very, very low cost to no cost from the Greater Boston Food Bank, who is another fantastic partner of ours. Um, we can buy food for anywhere from 10 cents a pound to 50 cents a pound and um, stretch a dollar much further. So we... Um, we certainly appreciate um, any donations, but the monetary ones are really, we can be the most efficient with those. Okay. And, and we have had uh, tremendous generosity from the community. Um, the mayor has been incredibly helpful, Mayor Koch, um, and we are continuing to receive um, donations from many places. We, I can't even begin to name them all because uh, people have just been great stepping up and we're very grateful for that. It will get us through uh, this ongoing challenge, which will not go away uh, for some time. Uh, we, we expect the winter um, to be much harder and uh, to have another increase um, again, partly because some of those benefits will very likely expire for uh, many residents who have not been called back to work yet. And, uh, and we know at our food center, we, 
We see people when they're first laid off, and those people often are the ones hired back last. And mm -hmm. so they need our help uh, for, we expect them to need our help for at least another year uh, or more, depending upon how long this public health crisis continues. So. Sure. And the, the food center is open to anyone, is that right? Um, yes, it, it is. We do require event. You can come in for the first time right now. We have a reduced intake process in order to minimize uh, the contact. Um, but we do ask that people provide their income documentation. And uh, generally, we're serving people who are at about 80% of median income. Okay. Um, so, you know, if someone has financial means, it's not, it's not a place for them. Um, yeah. But um, but it's low and moderate income are the clients that we serve there. Very good. Um, as you're aware, the governor has extended the moratorium on uh, evictions and foreclosures, I believe, into October um, now. Um, so that will, I guess, provide some relief for folks who might not be back to work yet or who are at least struggling to pay the rent or mortgage. But are you concerned about after that moratorium expires? Um, we're concerned now. Okay. <laughs> People... People owe rent now, <laughs> and yep. um, while and we are encouraging and and I want to uh, encourage people here who are listening. If you are behind in your rent, call us um, and schedule an appointment. Um, we have resources that are available. We have a new resource coming in from the city of Quincy. It's a resource that is provided to the city from HUD, and um, we are. Um, Act, encouraging people to call now so that they do not wait until that moratorium is over. And uh, there are resources available. There are resources that we have and other housing entities have. And um, people should take advantage of that now before those resources run out, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't want to wait and be a year behind with their landlord. That moratorium will likely, the components of it will likely change in October. There was a lot of discussion about a new, a new bill was put forth in front of the legislature uh, that is now set off to the side as, uh, you know, given the extension. Um, but there are different elements to that than the first one. And, um, and people will still owe that rent to their landlords. And, and we know there are many landlords who are struggling themselves yeah. through this, the smaller landlords. Um, we want to get help to both the tenant and the landlord um, as quickly as possible because uh, it, you you know a rent rents in Quincy. We we did the Quincy COVID rent program, uh, and the average rent we were paying was about fifteen sixteen hundred dollars a month, which is on the lower side um, depending on your household. Uh, and uh, that can add up very quickly. Yeah. Uh, so when someone, we don't want folks ending up with an eight, nine, ten thousand dollar $10,000 arrearage, which then becomes overwhelming and feels impossible to pay. So, um, so we encourage people to call our main number to schedule an appointment. Uh, that number is 617-479-8181. Um, um, our direct housing intake line is 617-657-5376. Um, those are all on our website, so um, you can access that information there as well. But uh, we, do, we do encourage people to call. We have a steady demand still. Um, but again, um, people are getting a little bit of help from the unemployment checks that may run out. Um, and even with that, we do know that many people are not able to pay their rent right now. They know the moratorium in it is in place, which is very helpful, but that doesn't mean that the amount that they owe their landlord is going to change. That, that, that amount will not be forgiven um, at the end of the day. Yeah, it's just, so, just deferred for, for the interim. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, Important. exactly. All right, now, at QCAP, Beth Ann, I'm assuming you're still not having in-person uh, meetings, is that right? Correct. Our main office on Hancock Street is our staff are here. We're all 
uh, almost everybody, we rotate schedules in mm -hmm. the building so that we um, are keeping proper distance. Um, masks are required as soon as we leave our office and walk into the hallway. Mm -hmm. um, but we are not, the building is not open to the public. We are doing all of our work by phone, email, uh, Zoom if we need to with a client. Um, and we are able to do that uh, very successfully so far. Uh, so uh, that will continue for a while. Um, we don't expect that to change. Um, we, we are in the process of figuring out whether we have students in our adult ed program return in September, just like the uh, schools, the K mm -hmm. through 12 schools are looking at that. We are looking at that and we will be making a determination in the coming um, weeks or month on that. Okay. You, you know, you mentioned uh, the winter, even though it's in the middle of a heat wave right now here. In, uh, I know. Yes. Um, but will there be uh, fuel assistance available again this year? Absolutely. And we will, we're about to send out, and within a couple of weeks, we'll be sending out our recertification applications to anybody who had been on fuel assistance before. And we strongly encourage everybody to call um, as soon as you they get that or uh, the end of August, uh, beginning of September to schedule an appointment. We will be doing all of that um, by phone um, and people will mail in their information. We are also, uh, we will have the capacity for people to drop their materials off in a, in a secure drop box that we will have down on our street level. Um, in a secure access point. Um, we're instituting a couple new things so that people feel um, they can get their information to us as soon as possible. So, um, you know, right, it's hard to think about it right now because it's so hot out today. Um, <laughs> But think about how hot you are and then think about how cold you get in the winter. <laughs> and, exactly right. Um, and, and there will be um, uh, certainly a program, uh, the same program that we've had in place for many years will be here in the fall. Um, and, the, and Congress provided uh, some, um, a little bit of additional funds um, for the fall. The state's probably won't be able to provide us funds. We mm -hmm. don't know yet, um, but we hope the benefit level is at least the same as it was this past year. But okay. there's plenty of resource available and we encourage people to give us a call. Sure. Now, obviously, uh, QCAP's not able to hold their traditional uh, in-person fundraisers, you know, that you've, that you've held over the years. Any virtual events that you, that you have planned that you can tell us about? We're not planning a virtual event right now. We, we are not holding our Best Chef fundraiser, of course. Yes, yes. Um, and we, we can't thank the restaurants enough for their generosity um, over the years. Um, uh, you know, even if we uh, didn't have the limitations on group gatherings, um, we, we, would, we could not ask them to donate like they have in the past. We feel we need to donate to them right now and encouraging people to uh, support the restaurants right now because they've all been amazing to us over the years. Um, but right now we are looking at um, um, gathering new resources from foundations. We've been um, very grateful to a number of different foundations who have been helping us. And uh, many of our donors from Best Chef have continued to donate to us and we are going to be working with them um, in kind of behind the scenes in a more quiet way mm -hmm. uh, this year. Um, so we don't have anything planned yet for mm -hmm. a virtual event. Um, I think in the coming year, if this continues and we cannot have a gathering, uh, we'll have to consider that. But uh, we're looking at all of it now. Yeah, I know it's it, everything, everything with every agency is, we'll see. Right, <laughs> you know? exactly, yeah. exactly. Yep, yep. Um, anything else you think we should touch on today, uh, Bethann? You know, I think that we've covered just about all of the main areas. Um, I, I just want to um, just say that the community, we are very blessed to be in this community of Quincy because between... Um, Mayor Koch and all the city departments and the hard work that they have done. We work hand in hand with the planning department um, and certainly now with Ruth Jones as in the public health department, um, able to call her whenever we have any questions. Um, to Manit Health Center, uh, Bay State Community Services is another partner that has mm -hmm. been helping us 
deliver food to our food center clients. And uh, that has been a great uh, collaboration, a new collaboration that we're doing uh, to make sure that um, people who cannot come to us who may be uh, COVID positive, who can't leave their home or are quarantined, uh, that we're able to get them food through a, a a, a delivery program that we've established with Bay State. So um, we just want to thank all of them. Um, and of course, our staff here who have just been phenomenal. As you, as you know, as every, um, as every employer knows, uh, staff have had to um, really adapt in ways that we never could have imagined, ever, ever. Um, and people have had a, a great attitude about it here with tremendous dedication. So uh, we're just um, very fortunate. I'm very fortunate to work with all of them. And uh, we're here to help. We just want people to know, even though our doors are locked on Hancock Street, we know um, that might discourage some people. We have signs up explaining it, but please call our uh, phone numbers and all of the various extensions are on our website. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, call us is the message that we want to get out to people. Okay. Well, it's, uh, it's our pleasure to help you get that message out. And if we can do any more here at QATV, uh, please reach out. We'd be happy to help. Thank you, Joe. You're, you guys are all great. We appreciate the, the um, outreach that you do and the word that you spread. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. Take care, be well, and uh, give my regards to everybody. Thank you, Joe. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Special thanks to Beth Ann Strollo for joining us today. Thanks to our crew and thank you for watching. And a reminder, do please participate in the Quincy COVID Memories Project, the Thomas Crane Public Library, Quincy 400, the city, and us here at Quincy Access Television have all teamed up to collect videos, photos, artwork, essays, and the other experiences of your life in Quincy during the pandemic. Send your submissions to quincyculturalmemory.com or you can mail them to the Thomas Crane Library, attention, local history, 40 Washington Street, Quincy, 02169. And an invitation to visit our newly redesigned website, qatv.org. You'll find all of our latest programs, news and information, video on demand, information about online classes, and live streaming. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please stay safe.